I still remember watching Henra Luna for the first time. I remember the feeling of patriotism that it gave me. I wanted there to be some kind of war just so I could join. And I think that's the power of Filipino film. This is the movie that made me want to become a filmmaker. Henra Luna was the perfect historical blockbuster with lots of action, romance, and a relatable Falmouth general overflowing with nationalism. And I think most Filipino historical films have similar elements. Movies based on Bonifacio, Goyo, and Lapu-Lapu are set during times where epic battles took place. And then you have the films about Jose Rizal, a man who traveled across Europe, spoke 20 languages, wrote novels, cured the sick, essentially the most interesting man in Philippine history. But this film, on the surface, it's a story about Filipino priests being pushed aside in favor of Spanish priests. Not exactly the war epic that gets Filipinos to flock to the theaters. But in reality, this is a film about the beginnings of our concept of nationhood and how the worst things can happen to the best of people. The film teaches us to continue to hope in the face of darkness. This might not be the action history film that everyone wants to see, but it's the film that our country needs to see today, maybe more than ever. I'm talking about the film Ma Jo Ha. <laughs> Joke lang. I'm talking about Gumburza and how this film teaches us to hope. This video is sponsored by the Ryan Rambles channel members and my supporters on Patreon. There is no Philippine history before 1872. That's a quote from the nationalist historian Judoro A. Agoncillo. Everything before that was just the history of Spain in the Philippines. And around half of the film takes place during that era. So let's split this video into two parts. Part one would be everything leading up to 1872. And part two would be everything that comes after. So before we begin, I want to just do a quick disclaimer. I'm talking about the events of the movie Gumburza. So don't take what I say as historical fact. Although I'll also be discussing real historical events. So if I'm talking about the movie, you'll see this. And if I'm talking about a real historical event, you'll see this. Obviously, spoiler warning for the film Gumburza. The film opens with the story of Hermano Pule played by Dylan Ray Talon. If you watched this movie in the theaters, chances are you were also confused and thought this was a continuation of the MTRCB ad. But anyway, Pule just wanted to be a priest, but he was discriminated against because he was an Indio. He was rejected, so he started his own religious order, and every single member was massacred. And it wasn't just Indios who were discriminated against, also Filipinos. And at that time, the word Filipino referred to those who were Spanish by blood but born in the Philippines, including this guy, Padre Maliari. Choke lang. Padre Pelaez, the original Papa P, played by the Papa P that we all know and love today. He wanted to fight for the rights of Filipino priests to retain control of their parishes. These were priests who were fluent in Spanish and loved by the people in the parish. But this was an order from Spain, and Spanish-born priests were taking over. According to Papa P, they are motivated by rich parishes and the story of Hermano Pule, but also by the revolution that happened over in Mexico, led by a priest named Miguel Hidalgo. And this is the ultimate irony. By trying to avoid something, you end up making it happen. The solution becomes the cause. By removing Filipino priests in fear of creating another Miguel Hidalgo, the Indios and Filipinos became united under oppression. And Papa P even says that we are all Los Filipinos. Even if eventually Papa Pilaez is unsuccessful, he dies from an earthquake. But it's too late. The wheels are in motion, and the idea of Los Filipinos is already there. The fire that Papa P started is now in the hands of his student, Padre Burgos who now has students of his own, his two favorites being Pasiano Mercado and Felipe Buencamino. And Papa Pelaez's flame was spreading and burning brighter. 
From reform in the church, it became reform in school. The students now wanted to remove the friars from education altogether. They wanted secularization, basically the de-religionizing of education. And here, Padre Gomez issues Burgos a warning. Your students will take your ideas and add their own context, turning your idea into something else entirely. And Burgos is unbothered. I mean, he did the exact same thing with Pelaez's ideas. And we see this at the end of the movie, as Pasano's brother, Pepe Mercado, becomes Jose Rizal, who then inspires Andres Bonifacio and the Katipunan, which proves Father Gomez's point that when your ideas start to spread, they could evolve into something different entirely. I mean, Papa Pelaez, the Gumburza, they didn't want an armed revolution. And that's not even what Rizal wanted. At least, not yet. Rizal wanted reform. That's what he was fighting for in Europe. His group, La Solidaridad, wanted the Philippines to become a province of Spain. They wanted Filipino priests instead of Spanish friars in parishes. And equal rights for both Filipinos and Spaniards. So when Rizal got back to Manila, he established La Liga Filipina, hoping to involve the Filipino people in the reform movement. But unfortunately, he got deported to Dapitan before he could really do anything. And the Katipunan itself formed out of the radical members of La Liga Filipina. In fact, two weeks before Rizal was executed, he renounced the revolution in its current state, calling it doomed to fail because it was premature. And later in this video, we'll see that maybe Rizal was right. But let's get back to the movie and Rizal's brother, Pasano, who sees his classmate Buen Camino get arrested. Eventually, Burgos finds out and finally feels the impact of the words of Gomez. Burgos has to be responsible for the actions of his students. But thankfully, he's good friends with Governor General De La Torre, who releases Buen Camino. But everything changes in 1871, when De La Torre is replaced by Rafael Izquierdo. And to quote Buen Camino, napakamalas ng Pilipinas. Because everything changes. Indian soldiers now have to pay tax, they have to do manual labor, leading to 1872. In the first month of that year, the Cavite mutiny happened. The pissed off Indian soldiers in Cavite decided to revolt. They were supposed to be joined by soldiers in Manila, and the attack was supposed to happen after they fire rockets into the air. But the leader of the mutiny, Fernando La Madrid, heard fireworks, thinking that was the signal. So Cavite revolted alone, and the revolt failed. This was the last revolt in Philippine history, because everything else was part of the revolution. That's how important this revolt was, even if it failed. Why? Because the Spanish blamed the Gomburza. They got Francisco Zaldua to be a fake witness. And honestly, for any historical film, you need two things. First, you gotta cast Ketchup Eusebio as a traitor. And then, you gotta get Jaime Fabregas to become a Spanish priest. But thankfully, here, he's the good kind of priest. Who made sure that the priests died as priests. Denying Izquierdo of his request of having the priests stripped of their religious clothing. And at this point, we get to the crux of the film. It's the night before their execution. And Burgos quotes Buen Camino, Malas ang mga Pilipino. Malas lahat ng isinilang dito. The Indios, who were slaves in their own land. The Filipinos, who have Spanish blood, but are treated like second-class citizens. And Padre Pelaez, who wanted things to change for the better, but was killed by an earthquake. And according to Padre Gomez, there's a reason for everything. He says, Sa gitna ng kadiriman, tungkulin natin alagaan ang liwanag ng kanyang kabutihan. In times of darkness, Gomez says that they have to offer their lives to the light. In the darkest of times, we have to hope. And this reminds me of something I learned in philosophy class back in college. The philosopher Gabriel Marcel talks about real hope and says that the soul turns towards a light which it does not yet perceive. Which means that in times of darkness, we have to cling to hope. Because that's all we have. We have to hope that things will get better, that things won't stay this way forever. And this idea is what got me through the pandemic. When there were times I was genuinely scared that we would all just have to stay home, isolated, forever. This doesn't mean that you just hope and do nothing and wait for things to come to you, right? But when you've done all you can and it's out of your hands, the only thing left to do is hope. Gomez hoped that their deaths would be the spark. And ultimately, he's right. 
Zaldua's death unites the people in anger. They call him a traitor. And how can you be a traitor if there's no Philippines to betray, right? And the people were united in their deaths. Zamora didn't really say anything, so the crowd was just in shock. But when it was Gomez's turn to speak, he talked about God's will. He was in acceptance. And then when it's Burgos' turn to speak, he can't accept what's going on. He says, he did nothing wrong. Wala akong kasalanan. And the crowd erupts. Even Pashano's brother, Pepe. Side note lang, Rizal was not actually there. I learned in school that Pashano was the one who witnessed it. But historians actually debate that. Some say that he was in hiding at the time, so he couldn't attend the execution. But in any case, whoever was there, their screams were no use. Burgos dies and the crowd kneels to pay their respects, while Spanish officers scream, Viva España! Viva España! And we focus on Rizal. We see him transform into an older Rizal, and then there's a montage of events. Rizal writes El Filibusterismo, he dedicates the book to the Gomburza, and in turn, it inspires the KKK and the revolution. And the flag of the Katipunan turns into the flag of the Philippines. Viva los Filipinos, mabuhay ang mga Pilipino, long live the Philippines, and the movie ends. Back when I was an intern at TBA Studios, they taught me to ask yourself two questions after you've watched the film. Number one, did I like it? And number two, how did it make me feel? First, yeah. I liked the movie, I thought it was well-paced, well-written, the cinematography was really good. But the second, how did it make me feel? Honestly, it made me pretty sad. I felt hopeless after watching this. Especially after thinking about the events that transpired after the film, you can't help but feel hopeless and think that Buen Camino was right. Napakamalas ng Pilipinas. Why? Let's go through the events that happened after the film finished. I think the end of the film is sometime in 1897 because Rizal was executed on the second to the last day of 1896. So let's say that the last scene was in January of 1897, just two months after that the Tejeros Convention takes place and Aguinaldo replaces Bonifacio as president of the Katipunan. And just two months after that, the Bonifacio brothers were executed by fellow Filipinos. And just seven months after that, less than a year after Rizal's execution, Aguinaldo signs the Pact of Biak na Bato, a ceasefire agreement, meaning that the revolution had to stop, and Aguinaldo had to go into exile in Hong Kong. And after five months of Aguinaldo in exile, the Americans attacked Manila Bay, which they won pretty easily as the Spanish ships were outgunned and outmatched. And then 18 days later, Aguinaldo returns, and the revolution continues. They signed the Declaration of Independence in June, but by August, Spain and the US have made peace. Spain wanted to save face. They didn't want to lose to brown people. They stage a fake battle, pretending to fight when they really just wanted to transfer control of Manila from Spain to the US. And on February 4, 1899, the Philippine-American War begins. And just two years later, Aguinaldo is captured and he swears loyalty to the United States. So less than five years after Rizal's execution, we had a new colonizer. And then 45 years and two world wars later, we finally got our independence. Which lasted about a good 20 years before we elected Marcos as our president. He was in power for 21 years, plunged the Philippines into debt, and like Buen Camino said, nabakamalas na mga Pilipinas. But going back to the point of the film, we have to hope. We have to believe in a brighter tomorrow, no matter how long that takes. I mean, when you think about it, the US only really 100% left in 1992, if you consider the military bases. So we were really only free from foreign powers 120 years after the Gumborza's execution. I know that sounds like a really, really long time, but... It makes you realize that our concept of nationhood is pretty young. I mean, most of our grandparents were born before the Philippines got its independence from the US. And we have to remember that change takes time. It's impossible to eradicate corruption, solve the traffic problem, and end poverty in one night. But the Gumburza film teaches us that there is value in continuing to hope. That some problems, especially the bigger ones, are solved through time across generations. So the best that we can do is give our country all we have to give. 
and then pass that fire on to the next generations. The way that Pelaez passed it to Burgos, to Rizal, to Bonifacio, all the way until Lino Broca and Francis M inspired me. So hopefully this video inspires someone. If I've passed on the fire to at least one person, I'm good. I would be the happiest person in the world. Because I truly believe that if we keep this fire burning, if we keep continuing to hope, there's no doubt that a brighter future for the Philippines is ahead. Thanks so much for watching this video. Hopefully you guys like these types of videos more than actual like reviews. I just feel like my skill as a creator lies in using films to talk about issues rather than critiquing the elements of film like cinematography, acting, and all that stuff. Special shout out to the Patreon family and the channel members, but especially the Mother Lily channel members, Ashley Martino and Mom Gay Ace Domingo. You guys rock, but till next time, peace and I love y'all. Uy mga Pinoy, ito na ang medisina Nagbabagong apoy, linagyan ng gasolina Kaya't tinatanong pa ba kung kanino at sino Ang tsak na puntahan sa kulturang Pilipino Ako na ang sagot, ang dakilang gamot